Good evening. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is Cassandra, and Dr. Dan Matthews is here with us. This is July 13th, 2012. Today's July the 11th. I just skipped two days. And <laughs> it's, it's the lecture. <laughs> it's the lecture. <laughs> we have some new people here, so, and, and some that have been coming since the beginning of Dan being here in, in Bulverde. <clears throat> so, Dan, thank you very much for being here. Very honored to be here. All right. All right. And so, again, this is Cassandra. And as spirit works, you know, the next thing comes along at exactly the right time for everybody. And for me, I was traveling around Texas, and there was a teaching classes on for an, um, an energy transformation technology that I do. And there was just one lady who came to all my classes, and about every six months, she would bring a brochure. That it was a black and white printed brochure, and it's about Dr. Dan. She said, "You really do need to go see him. He's in Houston, or, or you know, he's in, yeah, he's just right down the street from here." And I'd look at it and put it down and go on with my workshop and forget about it. Every six months she did that. So that went on for three years. <laughs> and, and then um, one time in, um, I forget, December, I think it was, uh, she did the same thing. She brought a brochure, and she said, you've got to go see this man. <laughs> He's in Austin, Friday, January, the something or other, and it's free, and it's a lecture. You're allowed to go. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, i got to go. <laughs> so I got a friend to go with me, and, we showed up at Dr. Dan's and, and walked into this beautiful room, and there was a man, very um, non-assuming man, sitting on a, a little chiropractic table in the middle of the room, um, and that was Dr. Dan. Um, and when he started talking, of course, you know, being a very good student, I took my notebook because I was going to take notes, and uh, he starts talking, and I had no clue what he was saying. It made no sense to me, but I was taking my notes. And about halfway through it, he looked at me and he said, it's not going to do any good to take those notes because you're not going to be able to understand the thing you wrote down when you leave here, left here. And I thought, yeah, right. <laughs> well, guess what? That was true. So, <laughs> so as with the lectures and the demonstrations, one person gets picked to be the subject of the demonstration, and everyone that's there gets the benefit of it. I got picked. And what happened with, for me um, at the end of that was uh, my awareness started expanding in all directions, like major. I'd only had that happen one other time in my life and just kept expanding, expanding, expanding. All I could do was laugh because I recognized it. And um, <clears throat> so every once in a while, Dan, he ended the, the lecture and everything, and every once in a while he'd come over and say, you okay? And I'd just laugh, and he'd walk off. And <laughs> he did that about three times. And I finally calmed down and was able to uh, talk. So he comes over, he's talking to us, and, we'd, and <clears throat> every once in a while he'd say, well, I could come to San Antonio. And I didn't even hear it the first two two times he said it. So the third time he said it, he said, oh, I could come to San Antonio. And all of a sudden I went, oh, you can come to San Antonio. <laughs> so I looked at my friend and said, he can come to San Antonio. Let's do that. So that was in January. He came to San Antonio in March. And that, that was, I believe, 2003. So it's nine years. That's about right. <clears throat> yeah. And so... It has been an amazingly wonderful experience. He has come every other month since then. And um, there is a lot of people besides myself that absolutely would not miss coming to see Dr. Dan and um, having some, whether it's to the group healing or having a private appointment or something, they just won't miss it. And I don't blame them because it made such a difference in my life. It made everything easier. And I, as I got to know Dr. Dan, I really realized that this is one of the most humble people I think I've ever met in my life. He has His ego um, extends to about the level of Arkansas jokes every once in a while. But other than that, 
<laughs> Other than that, he's just really authentic and and uh, trusting, and he walks his talk absolutely, and he's very generous and he's very kind, and it's consistent. That has not changed. He has so he has has been a guide, I guess you could call it, for a whole bunch of us for a long time in this uh, process that is now being called ascension, and it has made it so much easier. So rather than riding a great big huge roller co coaster of hitting the highs and then hitting the lows, that's brutal, it leveled it out to where it's just a it's just a little wave. And you get to recognize it, and and it's an expansion of consciousness. At least that's what I call it. It just keeps going, and so we have a great time when he's here, and uh, he has a wonderful story which he will tell you a little bit about. And in these lectures, he brings to us what's new, because everything is moving so fast in this process that we're all going through, whether we like it or not, that it's always new. It really is always new. So he's got something new to say every single time. And then um, you get to ask questions. He likes questions. If, by chance, you can't get a private appointment in person, wherever you are, he, he can do them on the phone when he's at home in Little Rock. And they work just as well. Some people even like them better because his wife, Vicki, is a magnificent, sweet, cute, precious, goddess-type lady. <laughs> with uh, This got some fire. <laughs> uh, has been trained to be the surrogate for anybody. So he uses her when he's on the phone. And so there's that combination of a divine goddess energy that all of this flows through. So pe some people really like that a lot. And so, um, here in Bull Verde, there are schedules over there on the table for the September and the November times when he comes. If you want a September appointment, there's a waiting list that started. Put your name and phone number on the back. And November does have some openings if you decide you want to do that. Just put your name and phone number on there. and. Uh, we do the best we can to keep everyone informed. Dr. Dan has a blog where um, everything gets posted that at least that we put out. We're trying to encourage other people to put information about his schedule and where he is and what he's doing and that sort of thing. Um, there were several video uh, videos of Dr. Dan actually giving a lecture, talking about Holy Divine Healing and what that is, and um, just like he's going to do here tonight, up on YouTube. You, so you can find it. Once those went up, um, <clears throat> and since we started the blog in January, the numbers of people that are finding him, not because of, just by word of mouth and by the videos, is shifting exponentially. Um, we, he's had, as of today, over 10,000 hits. 1,500 of them were yesterday. The web address for his blog is www.ourcommunityvoices.org. Org. That takes you straight to it. <coughs> Um, and it tells you how to get in touch with any of us, all of his hostesses all over the country, and what his schedule is as far as we know it and where he will be, uh, and as well as any updates that we might have. So you can follow his blog, and you'll get immediate uh, information in your email about anything that's put up there. Okay? Um, all of the group healings in Texas are now teleconferenced. So if you can't get to one in person, you can get to one on the phone. And by being there, you make a difference. Can you, connect to the blog? you can access those uh, teleconferences through his blog. Um, it's on the tab 
for purchase events, right? Purchase events. Okay. So I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Dan. We're so grateful. I mean, so grateful. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> uh, that you're willing to hit the road every other month and come to all of us in Texas. He goes to New Mexico twice a year, February and October, and in Indianapolis, April and August every year. He goes on vacation in June, and he goes home and makes candy in December. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you on the phone, just give me a few minutes while I put the microphone on Dr. Dan, and we will be on our way. They unmute themselves? Yes. Well, and they will hear it. They just don't speak the phone. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh, I know. Well, maybe we can monitor. So, I think that we could do a question through the globe on the phone. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and unplug it at that time. Okay. Okay, so we're going to uh, try putting this on speakerphone and uh, make sure that the recording is really good so that if you on the phone want to um, ask a question and press star six, we'll actually be able to hear you. So hold on. All right, we're on speakerphone. Back to Dan. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Just leave it right there. Okay. We'll be fine. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for having us in your home tonight. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Very honored to be here and very honored to be in your presence this evening. Uh, thank you so much for coming out on a potentially rainy evening. Um, I, I love to share the story, and um, it um, it always uh, it feeds my soul to do this work, so I'm kind of hooked on it. So, but thank you very much for coming out this evening. Um, I've been doing this now, uh, I think this is my t uh, 20th year since um, my 92 uh, heat stroke uh, that um, got me started on my sacred path. I've um, been a chiropractor now for about, um, I think, um, 29 years. And, um, and uh, you know, I had a, a good life being a chiropractor. And um, But when I had this... Um, event occur on my last day of vacation in 92 at my mother-in-law's uh, bay house in South Alabama on a very hot, humid August day. Um, I was about three quarters of the way of mowing the, the yard and uh, had a heat stroke and um, went down the rabbit hole and had a telepathic encounter with crystal light beings on the other side of the veil and got awakened uh, to this sacred path and, and what my gifts are about. And already being in the healing arts, you know, it was a real, a real nice uh, transformation. Um, except, um, you know, I kind of took me maybe three years to kind of uh, um, run everybody off, you might say. You know, it uh, really wasn't a chiropractic thing. And um, <laughs> one of my clients uh, in Little Rock uh, took me to a birthday party down in uh, Navasota, Texas to a lady that's a, a pretty big, uh, has a big uh, organization of being a healer and um, just took my little table down there and set it up under a shade tree and just started working on anybody that wanted to lay on my table and things just kind of took off. So I started going to Houston on a weekend once a month and uh, and it didn't take but just um, maybe three years for it to grow into a two-week um, outing um, in seven different locations, you know, so moving around quite a bit. So it really took off for me when I, I got out of my hometown, which is kind of weird. And uh, But um, I'm very grateful that I, that I get to do this. And, and you know, with, uh, with Sacred Paths uh, so many times, you have to take each step in trust, 
and you get led and you get knowing about your trust steps and it just kind of starts snowballing and you kind of learn how it works and and it really takes all the pressure off of you. You don't have anxiety or worry about what's around the corner, that kind of thing, when you understand that all you got to do is show up today and take your step in trust and allow the holiness of life to unfold the way it wants to. Uh, it will show, tell, and lead you if you have no uh, predetermined uh, path that it has to take or beliefs about it all. All that kind of thing will always edit the fullness of your holiness. And, and so if you learn how to practice the parable of being a Christed being, which is to um, accept, forgive, surrender, yield, trust, and ask for guidance, it's an ancient technique that puts you in the correct posture for your inner holiness to come forth. It will show, tell, and lead you. And, um, and that's an amazing difference. I mean, when you learn how to perfect it, it's like riding a bicycle. You just got to practice it and persist a little bit. But it always makes your cup overflow with goodness. It'll lead you through all the torturous paths of life. And uh, it puts a wow factor into your life that you really get no other way. Goodness comes out of the woodwork when you're willing to accept it in any form your holiness wants to provide it. So it's really a, it's a beautiful thing. And, um, you know, people don't really understand when you relate to holiness through belief, your belief will edit the fullness of your holiness. And, you're, and it's like, you know, all belief comes from the 10% conscious ego. And when the dumbest part of you dictates to the most conscious part what it has to be, you, you wind up uh, editing 95% of it. And you're lucky to get a drop in your bucket when you do that. Um, and it's so hard to keep up with all that stuff. And so this is just a lot easier. You know, it's, it, ascension, following a holy path, is never about the head. It's about opening your heart and seeking holiness. And you do that and couple it with practicing the parable of being a Christed being, and amazing things happen real fast. It's definitely the easiest path on the planet. Anyone can do it, and all people are welcome to participate in this amazing plan of grand design of the ascension of this world. <clears throat> you know, um, when you was created in this life at your very conception, three things happened at one time. You were one cell of flesh, that one cell was pulsating, and there's a full-grown, complete adult-sized energy field around the one cell uh, that it grows into as you become an adult. But these three things, the pulse, the energy field, and the cell, is the trinity of your wholeness. The pulse is your divine presence. The energy field is your Holy Spirit. And the one cell is living flesh. It's the soul. And um, so it's amazing. Um, two of the three are eternal and come from the dawn of creation, your spirit and your presence. And your soul is just the vehicle that you need to be on this earth to participate in life on all levels, the physical on up. And um, your Holy Spirit, which is actually who you are, your consciousness is a part of your Holy Spirit, the energy field. Um, it, um, and see, the energy field and the pulse have a record-keeping mechanism. The, the recording of your divine presence is the Akashic Records, and the recording of your Holy Spirit is inscripted in your, in your crystal lattice, which is the geometry of your Holy Spirit. So there's two records of all of life, and these two records tell us of a time before the great downfall when we were all holy beings. Um, we function from the knowing of our inner holiness and we were of the highest paradigm. Uh, we were all the way to the top of the ladder. We were androgynes, a goddess of the holy O. And then we went, we got in, we functioned from the knowing of our inner holiness. And then we got unzipped all the way from the top paradigm all the way down to the first paradigm. And uh, in that low paradigm of low consciousness, your perception of reality is very illusionary. And see, as we got unzipped, we became 
disconnected from all of the aspects of our former divineness. And being in this low consciousness of the first paradigm, we perceive all of this stuff that we've been disconnected from as being outside of us and separate from us. And um, and we gave, you know, held it in high esteem, gave it name of personality, everything from archangels to God or whatever, a, a hierarchy. And we perceive that to be outside of us and separate from us. But the truth of it is, is that it's all an aspect of who we are in our wholeness. It's all a part of us. And so as uh, the ascension process is about returning to the holy order of life before the downfall. And so, um, it, and in fact, uh, this life before the downfall in the holy order was five times longer than from the downfall until today. So you've got a lot more experience in being a holy being than you do a human being. A human being functions from the belief of its ego. A holy being functions from the knowing of its inner holiness. See, so that's a big, that's a big, big difference. Well, we were all created. Our Holy Spirit, which is who we are, was created at the dawn of creation. And uh, we were created in, in the model of the holy O. O means whole. To be of O-ness is to be a whole being. And we were created in this intuition of O, which creates um, the feelings of love, which are all the positive feelings and the thoughts that go with those positive feelings, and allows us to share the common O, which is our holy intimacy, when you share the common O with others, you feel how you make others feel. You think their thoughts. You share a common reality. And you have total integrity, honor, and high regard for all of life when you have this connection of the Holy O. And when we're like that, we perceive and manifest reality from the knowing of our 100% conscious inner holiness. And that is the being we were designed to be. When we went through this downfall, our intuition was changed from O to one. And um, the intuition of one, you know, intuition is the precursor of thought and feeling. It changed our feelings to fear. And that's all the negative feelings and the thoughts that go with those feelings. And when this happens to a person, initially they separate on their inside and then secondarily from others. And when this happens, you perceive and manifest reality from the belief of your 10% conscious ego. And, um, and in 10% consciousness, life is an illusion. And to complicate matters further, the ego is the part of you that defends, and its tool is fear, the origin of all negative feelings. And so people get riled up through all that stuff. Everything in life that is apparently dark or evil, whatever you want to call that, um, is really nothing more than fragmented holiness uh, that got polarized and became its opposite. So in the ascension process, all those pieces come back into their holy order, and there's not a uh, junkyard or a scrapyard to deal with. It's a very clean and neat thing, and so we get all these parts and pieces put back into a holy order. That's always orchestrated by your inner holiness. And when, um, when we do a session, it's not about me figuring out in my educated brain what's wrong with you and try to get a desired result. We actually do a demonstration of the parable of being a Christed being. We surrender to your inner holiness and allow your inner holiness to speak to your needs. And, and that's how this stuff works. So on down the yellow brick road we go, one step at a time in trust, and things just start snowballing. It's really amazing. And this works for any person that will, um, that will do this. You know, it's just amazing. It's been demonstrated over and over again that it works um, no matter who you are. If your heart beats, there is a living holiness of life within you. And if you learn how to connect with it, and it's through the parable that that happens, it will come forth, show, tell, and lead you and speak to your needs. It's the most amazing thing. So you never have to figure it out yourself, try to do it yourself. 
itself is the fragmented soul that's controlled through the belief of the ego. It's the least conscious part of our being that has no knowing, and it is the worst possible option to turn the project over to to figure out what's going on with the problem. You know, you're basically getting in line for another butt kicking when you do that. And that's totally avoidable. You know, we don't have to do that, you know, so that's the beautiful thing. And, um, and so we started down this uh, paradigm. Um, we worked real hard. I worked, uh, and there's lots of people besides me that are working on this. Uh, all of our gifts are snowflakes, none, none are the same. It takes an army of people participating in ascension. It's like getting a 10,000 pound boulder to roll. You know, it takes a great effort to get it to roll. Once you get it rolling, it builds its own inertia and it kind of takes off like a snowball downhill. And so it took hundreds, thousands, millions of people doing their sacred path that preceded me uh, to get this to happen. I, and I worked on this path for nine years, and we were all in the third paradigm. Um, a paradigm is a reality of consciousness, and the number in front of the paradigm is the indicator of how many dimensions of reality it takes to create that particular reality of consciousness. So if you've ever wanted to know the difference between a dimension and a paradigm, that's what it is. Um, you know, it's like a paradigm is a cake, and the dimensions are the ingredients that make it up. And so that's a good way to look at it. So um, I started finding out um, that there were actually ten number sequences in a crystal form that um, creates um, creates reality. And... Um, Coming into um, into this life, the world had been in the third paradigm uh, since Jesus. And um, you see, from, from the great downfall, we landed in the first paradigm. That's where one dimension of reality creates a reality of consciousness. And the characteristics of the first paradigm is death, killing, and war. Not a very pleasant thing. And then about the time of Abraham or so, uh, the second paradigm came into the world that exists simultaneously with the first. Um, of course, the first is still around because we still got death, killing, and war going on. And, um, and then about the time of Jesus the third, the second one's characterized by pretty much the bad stuff people do but not kill, like rob, steal, cheat, labeling others, politics. These are all second paradigm activities. And second paradigm activities always um, separates good people from one another and pits them against each other, kind of like politics, you know, Democrats and Republicans. You can't tell who's what until, until they start talking about all that stuff. But then on to the third paradigm that came in about the time of Jesus. Uh, this paradigm is the more benign aspects of the human condition, gossip, condemnation, criticism, self-pity, being judgmental. These sorts of things are the third paradigm characteristics. And in all three of those first paradigms, you have karma to deal with. And, um, well, in uh, 2004, the first paradigm shift in 2,000 years occurred into the fourth paradigm. And, the, and this was a major break. Uh, there is no more karma once you get into the fourth <coughs> paradigm. And you see all of the establishments of this world, from government, religion, to corporate structure, even how people think and analyze, all of that was created in the third paradigm, you know. And, and then things started changing. Um, so from 2004 all the way through Christmas of 2011, which was just last year, it took that long to get this first number sequence completely integrated into the earth grid. And the first number sequence is 1 through 15. It's called the linear timeline because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that, on up to 15. And it turns out that this linear timeline is actually the walls of a prison that we had all been in that actually turns off 90% of the consciousness of our holy old uh, being that we was before the great downfall, you know, uh, 
It just won't power up telepathy and teleporting on a linear timeline. No, no more than you could get rabbit ears to work on a HD TV. You know, it just ain't going to do it. So, um, well, the the most awesome thing, you see, uh, this linear timeline. Um, all 15 of these paradigms, everything from the first paradigm of death, killing, and war, through the 15th paradigm of cosmic consciousness. All 15 of these paradigms are presently happening simultaneously on this earth. Well, on December the 8th of this year, the linear timeline is uh, going to collapse. The first 14 paradigms will collapse into the 15th. The 15th of cosmic consciousness has only been here since last Christmas, and that is the only paradigm of the first 15 that will survive into 2013 which is the Aquarian age. We're presently still in the Pisces age. Um, well, amazing thing. Um, four days after the 15th paradigm came in, the second number sequence came in, and this starts the exponential progression. The second paradigm is the 69th paradigm, a reality of consciousness created when 69 dimensions calculate into consciousness. Um, and then, you see, that was the 29th of December. A couple of days later, the 1st of December, the 177th paradigm integrated the Earth grid. Um, January the 7th, the 999th integrated the Earth grid. And as of May the 6th of this year, the 10th and final number sequence, the 999th to the power of 7th paradigm integrated the Earth grid. And... Um, and, you know, going from, um, from 4 through the ninth number sequence, which is 177 to the power of 7, you know, that's a lot of real estate between 4 and 177 to the power of 7, but it pales in comparison from the jump to 999 to the power of 7 when the tenth came in. The, the tenth paradigm is hundreds of thousand times more powerful than all of the other paradigms combined. And when we got to this one, the 999th to the power of 7, the very core of the human condition came forth. <clears throat> and, and the very core is a little Freudian psychology. The psyche of mind is about the id, which is the 20... Um, see, there's a 57th dimensional schematic of the wholeness of our being. The 21st is the id, the 22nd is the ego, the 23rd in the human condition is the superego. Um, in the holy order of life, there is a holy o id, a holy o ego. There is no superego. It is a androgyn. The way that I look at the id and the ego, it's like an iceberg, 90% underwater, and that's the id. It's in your unconscious, beneath your subconscious. And this is where the instincts, the nature of our being resides. It's also the center of our pleasure centers, uh, from the libido. You know, a newborn baby is totally id-ridden. They're in their survival and their comforts, that kind of thing. Well... Because the portal, since the downfall, the portals have been blocked for people to get off of this earth when they pass over. They're supposed to go back. Well, your, your soul is actually designed to become ash or compost, and it actually nurtures and heals the earth. But your soul, I'm sorry, your spirit and your presence are designed to go back to the dawn of creation. But the portals were blocked, part of the downfall. And... Um, because the portals were blocked, people were forced into uh, incarnating millions of times in low human consciousness. And the carnage of this low human car consciousness is in the id. And, um, and it's the basis of all addiction, self-destructive behavior, uh, things of this nature. And, and within the id are seething resentments of anger, sexual abuse, death, killing, and war. The worst of human carnage is in there. And see, the, uh, the ego is your consciousness, and its purpose is to rationalize your id 
and try to sell it to the outer world. And uh, so you can see the ego has a uh, his hands full, <laughs> you might say. And then the super ego's purpose is to moralize your id and ego, you know. And and since in the human condition, id and ego and super ego are all in the belief realm of consciousness. It's all about, you know, the superego tries to moralize your belief. And that's what religion's all about. And to moralize belief is the origin of the creation of war. And uh, that's still true today. So, <coughs> getting uh, the id and the ego back into their holy exp expression, <coughs> like I was telling you, a while ago, everything of the downfall has a holy expression. <clears throat> and um, the holy expression of the id is the portal of teleporting. The holy expression of the ego is the portal of telepathy. The id is the feminine, the ego is the masculine. <clears throat> And this brings us to the 23rd dimension, which is the androgyne. And see, uh, the androgyne is the highest expression of our holiness. It is our source, the return of our source to within us. <clears throat> to have an androgyne, you see, each gender, feminine and masculine, has feminine and masculine within it. And in the human condition, they're very out of balance, very uneven, and people have these patriarchal or matriarchal attitudes and beliefs. Well, you have no androgyne when you're like that. But as the ascension process starts, and see everybody on the planet is, inter is uh, stewing in the frequencies of these uh, paradigms because they integrate the earth grid, what happens is your feminine and masculine start to refine until they become holy and divine and they start sharing the common O. And when that happens, the third circuitry of our being, our androgyne, is synthesized. And it is the origin of our holy O sexuality, which actually is a fountain of eternal life that springs forth from our hearts. And it is the power supply to 276 activities of our holy O higher consciousness. So this just came in a couple of weeks ago. When it comes into its fruition and its maturation, it will allow us to disconnect from any outer world thing that we now rely upon to meet our needs, like money and job and stuff like that. Um, you can synthesize and create what you need. There was no money. We had no job before the great downfall. You know, We were on vacation all the time. Sounds good to me. And... Um, So uh, this androgyne is the return of our source to within us. And see, when we're in the state of an androgyne, there is no hierarchy. The hierarchy is your wholeness. It has all come back to within you. And um, we are all the same. We're wholly all the same when we're androgynes. And, and we share the common O. We have total uh, intimacy with one another. And um, life is a joy. It's just really an amazing experience. So that's what we're headed into. That's the purpose of ascension, is to reacquire our lost holiness, to become holy beings once again. And um, the next step after correcting this 21st, 22nd, and 23rd dimension is to heal the... And see, each one of these dimensions, 1 through 57... Each one of them has seven star systems. And when the healing is done on all seven star systems, that's known as the platinum ray. Well, there's one out of all 57 dimensions that has an eighth star system. And it is the 52nd dimension. It's your eyes. And um, this eighth star system of the 52nd dimension is the common O. 
that we share between our feminine and masculine, id and ego, to synthesize our androgyne, and it is the common O that we share with others to have holy intimacy where we can feel how we make others feel and think our thoughts. And, um, and man, when I had this experience, when I crossed over the veil uh, from my heat stroke, it was the most uh, loving, um, the most incredible feeling I ever had. Um, you treat other people so kind, they're so precious to you because you can feel how you make them feel. It's just an amazing thing. It's the greatest rudder check in life. It keeps you in integrity, honor, and high regard of one another. It's an amazing experience. And this is actually how we're created to be. Well, this uh, eight star system of the 52nd dimension is actually the pathway of the alien invasion that caused the great downfall. And um, once we get this back into the common O, the next steps have no human downfall component. After the common O, our next blessing is the O change point, which is the mechanism that allows you to express creation through these ten number sequences of creation, these paradigms that have come in. Our next blessing after the old change point is our divine spark. And our divine spark comes from the great cosmic pulse. It initiates our divine thought, which brings forth our divine will. And this is the directive of the new holy old life that's coming to this earth. After our divine spark, we have the blessing of our holy old deeds. That's dog, elephant, elephant, dog. It's snake. <laughs> and uh, not beads. That's what half the people like I'm saying. But it's deeds, having holy deeds, doing good, good works of, of goodwill. And and uh, and so these three uh, uh, last steps we've had in the ascension has no downfall component. So once you get through the point of the invasion, we're back into the holy O, you know. And so it's just really beautiful how things are rolling in. And I'm so pleased that uh, everyone that was in our group healing last night, they have. I, I came to Texas with six new pieces of ascension since I was here in May, and everyone that came last night got four of the six, you know. So it's a, an amazing way to advance um, your being. Uh, so I encourage you to participate in group healings. Not only do your sacred gifts come forth to help all humanity, but you personally will make quantum leaps in your own ascension. So it's... Uh, it's a win-win thing. Well, I've kind of put it all out there. Uh, that's the skinny on it all. Um, so now we're ready for questions. And if you, uh, if there's any part of any of that that you need to have clarified, um, this is your chance to ask. So I invite you to ask. Will you remember to repeat the question? So it's yeah, the yeah. Here, so just ask one question. Uh, a simple question. Don't ask four or five at once because I'll have to repeat it and that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Marcia? So did you, um, you mentioned uh, that anybody who has a heart that speaks or whatever it's all the supply to, is that including animals? Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see, uh, the heartbeat is the pulse. The great cosmic pulse is the dawn of creation. And it is your holy divine presence. And if you have a beating heart, you have a divine presence. Okay? So they're going through the ascension as well. Well, you know, the animals didn't get disconnected no. like we did. we did. Yeah. You know, they've been smarter than us for a long time. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you know, they're aware of what happens to us because animals, um, well, you know, some of them are very lovable and cuddly, um, you know, cats and dogs, that kind of thing. Not so much honeybees and grizzly bears, but uh, 
but you know, pets, those kind of animals, they actually shield us of a lot of our anguish and stuff. They take on our issues, and they're they're trying to help us. And they don't speak language because they don't need to. They communicate with telepathy. You know, all I got to do is go fill up a bathtub uh, for my dog, and uh, he's hiding under the couch. <laughs> well, I, you know, he's passed on, but that. That was my experience. You know, animals, they they can just tell what's going on. I haven't ever figured out what freaks them out about thunder, but uh, they, that does. Uh, yeah, another question? Yes. Do you know like six steps for the Christ of being? Can you repeat yeah. those again? Yeah, I can, and there's cards right there that have them written on there. But the six steps are... And I'll just kind of go elaborate on this because this is the key. This is the easiest path on the planet. A bazillion times easier than trying to figure it out yourself in 10% consciousness. And it all starts with your problem, worry, concern, ever how you want to label this, this thing that's an issue to you. Okay. And... Um, um, <clears throat> But the first step is acceptance. And what that means is if you got a problem, go on ahead and accept it as your own. Don't blame it on outer world things. Uh, you play a part in it or it wouldn't be your problem. So just accept it as your own. Forgive yourself for the pain it's created in your life. And then surrender the whole nine yards to your inner holiness. And... Um, and then the next thing is to um, um, <clears throat> is to yield to the will of your inner holiness. So that's a one-two thing. Uh, you have to surrender the problem and yield to the will of your holiness. And just like that, you're off the hook. The next thing to do is to show up and take your step in trusting your inner holiness without having to understand a darn thing about what's around the corner and ask for guidance. And you just put yourself in the posture for your inner holiness to come forth and it will show, tell, and lead you. You see, your inner holiness is kind of shy. And if you've got big ideas of your own, you think it's got to be a certain way, you will edit the fullness of your holiness and you will be lucky to get a drop in your bucket, see. And um, personally, that's, uh, you know, belief mechanisms are relating to holiness that's the problem. And um, so uh, through belief, the dumbest part of man dictates to the holiness, the most conscious part, what it has to be or it's not going to be accepted, you see. And um, so that's it. Acceptance, forgiveness, surrender, yield, trust, and ask for guidance. They're all passive steps. They're all child's play. Anybody can do that. And so when you have problems in life, Get out of your head, do the parable, open your heart, and seek your holy path, and things will clear real fast. It's just really amazing how fast things will will find an answer. Your holiness, you know, your ego is what asks all the questions. Your inner holiness is what has all the answers. And so take your step in trust, and uh, it won't be long. You won't have any questions anymore. Uh, they'll, they'll just totally quit coming because you're, connected into this process and your inner holiness is taking care of all of it. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. And I, I'm so uh, thankful that uh, we have this opportunity to be a Christ of being, which simply means a person that surrenders to holiness. You know, um, the Antichrist is actually the belief of the ego. It does not surrender to holiness. It tries to make up all the rules on how it has to be. And so um, that's kind of interesting to note that. Okay, any, any other questions? Um, it is coincidence that the ball happened through the eight star system and all the other hidden seven systems have seven star <coughs> systems, and did I miss what a star system is? Yeah, um, it, it, um, it, it is a, uh, it's not just a coincidence, you know, that is the place, this, this old change point. Um, 
is uh, such an important thing of our holiness, you know, because it allows us to be connected. We connect to life through the common old. And uh, and this is where the invasion occurred. Um, and, you know, I didn't uh, I didn't know any of this stuff when I started on this path. It's, um, it unfolds, you know, when you take each step in trust, this is what unfolds. And... Um, but way back in the beginning of this work, um, I was told to um, make a book about um, these 57 dimensions and get the codes for the seven star systems that make up each one. So um, I, I've done all of that, and um, and it's amazing how the sacred path will kind of leave that uh, for a while, and then it will come back to it again, you know. And, and so um, when... Um, when we got to the 12th paradigm, I was uh, given the task of, of um, finding out what had changed the intuition from 0 to 1, and that led into this 8-star system. I found out where it came from and all that kind of thing. So it's a fascinating story that one of these days I'm going to tell what the, all that is, but the time isn't right just yet. And so... Um, I want to keep that uh, keep that little information until the time is right to turn it loose. All right. Um, what, what you got another question, Joe? Um, well, so the star systems are like stars that we know of, or is it Well, star systems are actually uh, portals of uh, teleporting and this sort of thing, and, and see the. Um, this 57-dimensional schematic of the wholeness of our being, it totally overlays our anatomy. The 57th is our crown up here. And, and, and it's also, you know, you can look at it like a pyramid. It's a 57-dimensional geometry. The tip of it being the capstone is the dimension of direct access to the inner holiness. And see, a human is characterized by a flat-top pyramid. It has no capstone. Because humans don't have a connection to their inner holiness. In fact, most of them think that it's on the other side of the clouds in heaven or something. You see? So without a connection to inner holiness, I guess belief is about the next best thing, you know. But but I tell you, my, the, the best definition of belief that I've ever heard is that it is an opinion, and usually with great conviction, about what you don't know. People are trained to have belief through authority. And that's uh, that's the thing about it. But because all belief, there is no exception, comes from the 10% conscious ego, that's the part of our being that defends. And its tool is fear, the origin of all negativity. So relating to holiness through belief and things like that, there's some big problems. Uh, number one is war. You know, it's no coincidence that religion is always at the center of war. Before the downfall, there was no war. You know, we were holy beings. Then. And, um, and you know, just like interpersonal relationships, if you don't have a common O and you do not share a common reality with this other person, what happens? You're, you've, got a, you've got a problem, you know. Uh, you're not uh, jiving. You've you got... You know, what you think they think isn't accurate and what they think you think isn't accurate. And, and this is when people have, uh, you know, a low opinion of one another and, and all this kind of thing. But, you know, we're all, we're all people with the same basic needs. And if we only had the common O to share so that we could feel how we make each other feel, that would totally resolve all these problems, see. But in a downfall situation, when you are a human of belief, you don't have that aspect uh, working for you. And people get all into assumptions and, and all this sort of thing, and um, it just really wrecks stuff. It gets things all messed up. So this ascension process is a way to uh, resolve our interpersonal conflicts, you know, by ascending to the point that you have the part of the old change, of the common O, you know, of this particular dimension that we got invaded through. Okay. 
Did I even come close to answering yeah, this question? Yeah, just to answer um, the star system, not being yeah. like uh, constellations, but being actually star gates that make up our existence. Yeah, our teleporting process and all of that. Yeah, and see, the, the uh, dimensions 50 and above are not from this universe. They're from other universes. And, and um, you know, I didn't even know there was other universes. I don't you know. I never heard that before. There's, uh, boy, there's tons of them. Uh, there's lots of universes. And, um, and to really blow your mind, uh, there's this thing now called the Holy O Earth. And, you know, in the model of one, the earth is a little dirt ball uh, speckle in the um, Milky Way galaxy, which is a huge celestial body, but it's even a smaller part of a much larger cosmos, which is even a much smaller part of a vast universe. And you stack all that together, and it makes the earth like the smallest thing there is. Well, in the holy old earth, it's all turned around. You see, the holy O earth, all of the universes are within the earth. I mean, to think that this dirt ball that we stand on is the earth is like thinking a tire is an automobile. It's just a piece of the automobile. And all this stuff you see in the sky is all a part of the earth. There's more to the earth than the dirt ball you stand upon. It's, it's not only connected to everything, Everything is within the Holy O Earth. The Holy O Earth is the whole enchilada. All of the universes are within the Holy O Earth. So that's that's an about face. Mm -hmm. So it just went from the smallest to the biggest. And you know, it's just like our consciousness. When you are in low consciousness, you're not connected to other things. When you're in total consciousness, you're connected to everything. You have awareness of everything. And uh, and so it's just totally amazing uh, what we were created to be, what we became, and now there's an ascension process that allows us to put it all back together again. And you get to do that if you will just simply practice the parable of being a Christ of being. That's all anybody is being asked to do. So, amazing thing. Okay. Um, no more questions? You got one? Um, you're talking about that people couldn't leave because the portals were closed, mm -hmm. but they kept reincarnating. Okay, are those portals open? Yeah, we got those straightened out my last trip through Austin, and uh, I had a lady on the table that uh, her father passed away a couple of years ago, and um, and um, all of a sudden, um, He's been coming to her and talking to her and uh, telling her that the portals are blocked and, you know, go talk to Dr. Dan about it, all this kind of stuff. So she gets on the table, tells the story, and I'm taking notes, and I find the portals and the stargates and all of that, and we got all that straightened out. We did it in a group healing in Austin last time. So things are really moving along. And uh, the, the, the dawn of creation. Right. Yeah. And, and say so one thing I want to add um, about all of that um, is, um, oh, I just lost my thought. But um, this was important. A lot of them went that day, I remember. Right. The rush. Yeah. As you did it during the eclipse, actually. Yeah, yeah. We had a, uh, we had a, there was an eclipse that day. And it was happening right as we were doing the group healing. And we had a 40-minute window of opportunity to bring back the common old. I remember that now. That was amazing. Um, we got to do that. Um, but, yes, the, uh, our presence, here's what I want to tell you. In order to, to, you must have an awareness that you were a holy being before the downfall or you cannot perceive the holy order of life. And, you know, because the Bible put the creation story, Adam and Eve and the downfall, in the first couple of books of Genesis, the rest of the Bible is about the downfall. And if you're into the Christian thing, that you only had one life, and it's this one, and say it started in 1960, 
well, you're a downfall being. You were born after the downfall. And, and if you don't have an awareness that there was this holy order before then that you were a part of, you can't perceive the holy order. Uh, just like the Indians couldn't see the boats coming. They didn't have an awareness of it. So you have to have an awareness that you were once a holy being to be able to perceive the holy order. So that's really important in our perception. The linkage is all messed up, and it makes the baseline of your being, instead of being the dawn of creation where your spirit and your presence came from, it makes you a being of the dawn of time, the future and past. And uh, it creates a tremendous problem in the linkage of your perception, and you cannot perceive the holy order. So I just want to get that out there also. Okay, well, this... Um, um, we kind of got it all out there. Uh, any any closing questions or anything you might have? Uh, we're I was just wondering what happens to the people who are not teaching and, and trying to raise their vibratory status and, and working to working to yeah, working with Christ consciousness, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm being told is hold the door open for every single person to get this. It'll happen in the 12th hour. I mean, it's really bizarre, but it's, uh, I mean, nine of the ten paradigm shifts have happened in the, la the last year of a 5,125-year cycle. And that's, the purpose of that is that anything that would oppose this has not the time to respond. And so it all happens right at the end of an age. And, and so that's uh, the best uh, thing that I can find about that. But... That's right. The work that we're doing is helping everyone. Yeah, in group healing, we do a, a humanity equation. So everybody's getting this. People are coming to this new order every day, you know, and uh, so people are waking up, and, and I, I hold a space for everybody to get it. Um, and so it's kind of like the lily pad story where uh, every day, you know, you had one lily pad one day, the next day you got two, the next day four. Well, three days before the pond is full, uh, you notice lily pads around the bank, but it's not the dominating thing of the pond. So it all happens at the end, boom, and all of a sudden uh, the popcorn is popped, you know. Okay, so um, we're going to have a little demonstration, and uh, we're going to get Cassandra up here on the table, and, um, and we're going to find out who the right person uh, is for our demonstration this evening. So, lady of the, with the blue shawl. What's your name? Sandy. Sandy? Okay. Okay, Sandy, just come right up here and lay right up here like Cassandra was. Just put, let your feet hit about right there. Come this way just another little scooch. There you go. There you go. That's perfect. Hey Sandy, just lay right on back and we'll see what your inner holiness wants us to do here. This blessing for Sandy is orchestrated by the living holiness that beats her heart and is a servant with Christic consciousness. Okay, holiness and Sandy, you know what we need to do here. It says yes. Okay. Okay, this is uh, the first time I've ever uh, worked on you. Isn't that correct, Sandy? Yes. Have you ever been to a group healing? Yes. Okay. Well, Sandy's a good example here. You know, the hottest thing I brought to Texas was the holy old platinum ray of the 21st, 22nd, 23rd dimension. Sandy's got it. <laughs> and, yeah, wow. so we don't have to do that one. So what Her Holiness wants us to do is to 
bring this eight star system of the 52nd dimension back into the common O. So we're going to work, we're going to heal the common O and remove this invasion of the downfall out of you. And so this will bring back your holy intimacy. I think intimacy consumes self-pity on the feelings chart. S-A-N-D-I? Why? Why? Okay. Unloved. Unloved. Okay. So intimacy consumes unloved. Okay, for y'all on the phone, it'll take me about uh, 10 or 12 minutes to get this all put together. And all those on the phone will get this also, as will everyone in the, that's here in person. Uh, if you don't already have it, you'll, you'll have it. Now this uh, this eight star system of the 57th dimension actually has two equations, and uh, I've only done I haven't done one of these uh, the whole time I've been in Texas. It's always uh, uh, a certain one, and it never changes. But this time it's the opposite. So everybody that has the other one will get this one also. So this will. This will be wonderful.
<coughs> all right. Let's just all put together. This blessing for Sandy and all in our group this evening and all of your lineages to bring forth the perfected holy old platinum ray of the eight-star system of the 52nd dimension, which is the common O. Into the neutral zone through a plan of grand design, through a divine decree of O, to bring forth perfected merger into oldness through perfected O paradigm portal of creation, to merge into oldness with the now of creation, to merge into oldness through the great seal of all knowing of O of creation. This great seal of all knowing to be applied to a triangle which will metamorphose and become a universal Merkaba and then merge into oldness and bring forth Sandy as a holy being with a holy old platinum ray of the eight star system of the 52nd dimension on holy old earth through the holy O fractal of your holy O, to purge, clear, heal, nurture, and support forevermore in the first corner of this triangle. Your holy O androgyn knows only your holy O. It connects the left and right hemispheres of your brain by the eight star system of the 52nd dimension. This merger allows you to synthesize your androgyn and to share the common O. In the second corner of this triangle, your holy O soul is now connected to the knowing of your inner holiness. Through the eight star system of the 52nd dimension, it shares the common O with its androgyn and spirit. In the third corner of this triangle, your divine presence now has the Christ matrix of the Holy Omega model. It ascends into Mount Maru through the eight star system of your 52nd dimension and shares the common O with its androgyne and soul. With Sandy and all of your lineages in the middle, this great seal of all knowing to merge into oldness through the threefold flame of your heart of your rainbow, gold, and emerald, violet, crystal light of creation, to merge into oldness through perfectionator, Merkaba, holy universe, seven coordinated groups of O universes of creation, to merge into oldness through perfected trinity anchor of the paradigm of seven through fifteen of creation, to bring forth the perfected manifestation of Sandy, as a holy being with a holy old platinum ray of the eight star system of your 52nd dimension on holy old earth through the holy old fractal of your holy old with inner feelings of happiness, right, and holy old sex all to be brought forth into this reality of this earth through your life and more than 800 trillion plus expressions of your life in perfected holographic holy o fractal of your holy o anointed with clear octa sandstone crystal light light of divine mother light of goddess light of Melchizedek, clear octa ruby red crystal light clear octa violet crystal light clear octa emerald crystal light clear turquoise crystal light clear magenta crystal light clear yellow coise crystal light clear red crystal light clear blue sky crystal light Clear silver crystal light, clear clear crystal light, clear white crystal light, clear rainbow crystal light, clear golden crystal light, clear blue crystal light, clear purple crystal light, clear violet crystal light, clear emerald crystal light, clear green crystal light, clear pink crystal light, clear octave orange crystal light, and a hundred and one rays of O light with feelings of calm, delight, and holy O sex, friendship, truthful and accurate, devotion, reliable and dependable, gratified, unwavering, and stable, elation, gracious and dedicated, contented, sincerity and consistency, inspired, love and serenity, 
the element of knowing, the illumination of O light, and the radiance of divine presence of goddess to nurture, purify, and elevate this perfected fractal code of your holy O into its very highest balance, harmony, joy, happiness, peace, love, compassion, structure, function, morphology, physiology, through the authority and the orchestration of the living goddess that beats your heart, this perfected fractal code of your holy O and all of your lineage goes into the hall of records of your being, attracting all things like it as it establishes its dominion and its perfection in the life expression of your being. O connecting, amen, and O hallelujah. And it is done. All right, Sandy, that ought to be integrated in about an hour. Okay. Okay, you can come up if you feel like it. And uh, take this worksheet and put it by your nightstand. You can do anything to it except write on it. Your inner holiness is the author of that. I just copied it. And it will uh, continue to copy as you sleep. It just You can make a bookmarker out of it if you want. You're very welcome. I'm very honored to do that for you. Thank you for coming forth and being our demonstration. Mm -hmm.